Bart Chilton has decades of experience, including the distinction uh, of, of being knowledgeable about what people actually do in trading. Let's first listen on speedy trading to Michael Lewis. It would trouble me about Bart Chilton. I agree. It's not against the law to leave the CFTC and, and work for the other side. Mm -hmm. That's what people is a revolving door. We haven't done anything about it. We can argue about whether that's a good thing or not, but leave that to one side. Right. Um, here's what the important point. IX creates this market where high frequency traders do not have the speed advantage. They can't they can't uh, exploit ordinary investors in the way they can in the in the broader market. In the broader market, HFT, high frequency traders are half half of all trades, maybe a little more. The question is, in a fair market, how uh, what percentage of the trades are they? You know, mm -hmm. when you eliminate these advantages, the opportunity to be a predator, what, 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 you where disappear are away. And so they don't disappear entirely. So that's the interesting thing. IX is happy to have high frequency traders, but they, they level the playing field. And the answer is about 20%. I mean, it, it, the IX will tell you the number. So that gives you an idea of the volume of trading that's going mm -hmm. on in the broader market that probably shouldn't be going on. Michael Lewis, who in his afterward goes right after Bart Chilton, he was gracious to you in our discussion, saying, of course, you have every right to be a lobbyist for free trade, uh, for the high frequency traders. First of all, who do you represent? Let's start with who Bart Chilton speaks for. Sure. Well, first of all, I'm not a registered lobbyist. Not that there's anything wrong with being Fine. A, a lobbyist. Fine. What do you do? I want uh, to make this clear, I advise uh, on strategy and tactics for a group of high frequency traders who call themselves the Modern Markets Initiative. Mr. They, Lewis they believe in what Fine. I believed when I was a commissioner. Mr. Lewis's distinction is the percent of trading that is harming the market. We're arguing about 50 percent or 17 percent. Does he have a justification to say that HF HFT is still intruding on fair pricing. Absolutely not. HFT's Explain. help fair pricing. The more liquidity, the smarter trading that you have, the better price. Is there an element that is harmful? I don't think so. I, I think it, my concern has always been, as a regulator and now, and the modern, modern markets folks agree with me, that we need to ensure that there are appropriate safeguards. So the SEC just... Would recently, you support a delay in timing like IEX has? Is it just simple as putting in a natural delay or a geographic boundary that would allow a level playing field to the benefits of HFT? Uh, it's not. It's something that exchanges can certainly do, and IEX has done it, and if that's their marketing thing, fine. Uh, but they still rely. All of these exchanges, all the dark pools, Tom, they rely upon HFTs for liquidity, and they make markets agreed, smart. Agreed, but why not have a delay regulated by guys like you and your old job mm -hmm. that levels the playing field so we get trust back in our market's world? It, it, the free, free market, and people can do that, and it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing for one exchange to do it or, or another. But in Germany, for example, they've mm -hmm. talked about slowing down two or three times. Think about this, though, Tom. It's not just when everybody gets the information. It's how quickly and how smartly okay. they react. So I give you something, and you, and you react quickly. If you react wrong, that's okay. not good for your business. Bart Chilton, your trooper to come on the show.